Good morning everyone. In today's session, we'll be talking about the extraoral radiography, the types of extraoral radiography which are needed for dental purposes and which can correlate along with the intraoral uh, uh, radiographics uh, techniques and the types of intraoral uh, uh, radiographs which we take and which can provide useful information or which can provide as a, a serve as an adjunct in uh, arriving at the chief, uh, chief complaints uh, diagnosis. So today's uh, extraoral radiography, uh, the first question arises as to why we need. I mean, uh, uh, at the JSI, we always have the IOPS. We have the RVGs, digital imaging, as we talked about, occlusal radiographies. So why do we need an uh, extraoral radiography? Now, obviously, we know that the lim basic limitation of using an intraoral radiography is the limited area which gets recorded on the, onto the film. But uh, which is not the case uh, with an extraoral radiography, which takes a much wider area, comes into a picture. So when, uh, when, in which cases do we need a wider area? Obviously, in uh, areas which have uh, developmental anomalies, which are more widespread and not localized. As you can see, large areas of the skull and jaws in cases of fractures or in cases of any bony malformations or uh, extensive diseases, uh, abnormalities, large lesions and obviously trauma also. So all these in all these cases, uh, wherein a normal intraoral radiography or a limited area of uh, visualization is not uh, indicated, or is it not? It's not uh, sufficient to arrive at a chief diagnosis. Then in those cases, we need an extraoral radiography, which can act as a supplement or uh, alone can uh, help us arriving at a good diagnosis. So in this, uh, we'll be talking about the skull projections, uh, which are primarily of use in our dentistry. And the first and the most common one is the posterior anterior uh, projection, also called as PA projection. Now, be it any kind of uh, projection, the basic usage of uh, all these uh, or indications of all these extra radiographies can be subdivided into different categories, starting with developmental or uh, uh, physiological. Uh, we have to differentiate between that. Then accidental, which are related to trauma or infectious diseases on a larger scale. That would be the third type. And then we go on to any, uh, any other kind of uh, uh, malformations or uh, disorders which can affect the skull on a larger scale. So be it any kind of radiography, we differentiate or uh, we uh, you base these indications upon these uh, categories. And apart from these, a uh, few of the radiographs have specific uses, which I'll be talking about, which uh, has to be, which uh, is indicated for that kind of disease alone or has been uh, modified in such a way that these particular diseases or these, uh, these particular disorders can be easily found out on a radiograph. So in a PA projection, it is a normal, uh, as I said, uh, developmental or fractures or related to trauma or conditions which affect the whole uh, skull. As you can see in this particular uh, view, if you can see the head position and the screen, which is placed in before it, we have a nose touch position wherein the uh, rays are uh, passed directly from behind and then uh, it is uh, projected onto the uh, screen which is placed in front of the uh, uh, head, uh, patient's head. Uh, the exposure parameters, uh, the KVP remains common for almost all the uh, external radiographies which is 70 KVP and the milliampere per second ranges from 30 to 50 in this particular case. As you can see, because of the head position, it is directly a, 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 a direct anterior posterior projection or a posterior and anterior projection for starting from the posterior end and the X-ray beam exits from the anterior end. So this would be the uh, a general picture of the uh, PA views wherein uh, the study or the analysis of this particular radiograph is done accordingly in this particular uh, order, starting from the topmost position, starting with the cranial vault or the screen, then followed by the cranial base, then the mid facial structures, which includes the sinuses, soft air spaces, as well as the heart tissues, and then going on to the body of the uh, mandible and then the teeth. So that would be the order in which we study a particular uh, PA view. <coughs> then a slight modification of this PA uh, view, that is the PA mandible. Now, uh, in this particular case, uh, as the name suggests, this is a view is mainly for the visualizing the entire uh, entirety of the mandible, starting from the left to the right condyle passing through the ramus and the body and along with, along with its uh, dental component that is your teeth both in the maxillary as well as in the mandibular region. So because of this uh, uh, indication of uh, viewing the mandible alone, the 
position of the uh, radiograph which is placed in front of the patient is placed uh, slightly below than what is placed in the PS skull as you can see over here. And then the, uh, big, uh, the nose position is uh, modified into a forehead nose position so that the mandible comes into the picture which is not overlapped by the mid facial bony structures. As you can see the bend, uh, because of the bending of the head, the mandible comes into the foreplay and the uh, cranial base structures or the posterior cranial base of bony structures are lifted up from the direction of the central beam so that we can visualize the mandible without any uh, obstructions or blurring. So that would be the uh, position of the head and as you can see that this is also a posterior anterior projection wherein the central beam passes from the base of the cranial uh, vault uh, from behind uh, around over the nape of the neck and passes uh, in the front through the center of the nose. Then there is another modification of this PA wherein it is called a rotated posterior anterior. Now why would uh, we need a rotated posterior anterior? Now we, we all know the mandible is in a V shape, is a V shaped structure wherein anteriorly it tapers forward and posteriorly it diverges. And we also know the parotid gland or the submatrix uh, mesentric space, all these are adjoint, uh, adjoined or just adjacent to the ramus of the mandible or the body of the mandible. Take for example a PA view and we have to find out any kind of intra uh, uh, parotid calculus which may not be visible on our uh, intraoral radiographies. Now because of the divergent nature of the mandible, the mandible itself, the ramus and the body, the bony structures get overlapped onto the par parotid or the so uh, parotid calcifications. So we might not be able to clearly differentiate or there might not be a, a clear differentiation between the calculi and the bony structures that is your mandible and the ramus. So what we do in a rotated PA is we slightly give a tilt so that this divergent nature of the mandible is then aligned parallel along to the uh, central beam so that in this case we can clearly differentiate between the two layers that is the mandible or ramus of the body and the parotid longitudinal section. As we can see the top down view in this particular case the uh, head is slightly rotated around about 10 degrees so that this divergent nature of the mandible is compensated and it is parallel to the central beam which is again a posterior anterior direction. So this enables us to see and this uh, uh, also makes us understand the usage or the indication of this particular radiograph primarily the calcula and the parotid glands which is adjacent to the body of the ramus. Lesions in the ramus for the medial lateral expansion, obviously because of the divergent nature, in a PA view, the medial lateral expansion may not be clearly visible, primarily because it is uh, overlapped by the body and the ramus of the mandible. Now we take that uh, uh, divergent nature away from the equation, then we can clearly make out the medial lateral expansion in any lesions affecting the body or the ramus of the mandible, uh, uh, for example, amyloblastoma. Also, submetric infection, again, and the paralleling nature and the divergent nature comes into the play. Now, this is the calvus radiographic view, which is a slight modification of the uh, posterior anterior uh, direction uh, view, views. Again, this is uh, the X-ray beam enters from the posterior end, exits to the anterior end. This is almost a same to a PA uh, view, again, specifically used for orthodontic purposes in calvus view. So, uh, wherein a slight 20 degrees angulation is given to the uh, posterior view uh, radiographs. Then we have the lateral skull projection, primarily again used for orthodontic purposes uh, to uh, differentiate uh, bony uh, class uh, malocclusions or uh, uh, teeth related dental uh, malocclusions to uh, notice uh, any abnormalities in the, uh, for orthognathic purposes as a prerequisite uh, for uh, orthognathic surgeries. All these are needed and apart from that we also have the general indications such as the uh, fractures of the cranial vault and the cranial base. Also viewing the entire, uh, all the sinuses are uh, clearly viewed on this kind of lateral skull position. This is the only radiograph which shows all the uh, sinuses be it the frontal, spinoidal or the maxillary sinuses, even the ethmoidal sinuses, which can be clearly seen on this kind of radiograph. As you can see, uh, the name suggests it is a lateral projection. So the viewing of uh, the patient's head is uh, the sagittal uh, angle, sagittal plane is parallel to the uh, radiographic uh, image receptor. 
and the uh, in the medial lateral direction is the direction in which the central rays of the X-ray beams pass. Again, the exposure parameters, as I said, the KVP remains constant at 70 and the milliampere second range is from 15 to 25. Now, this would be the uh, evaluation of this particular image, wherein this would be the final picture of a lateral uh, uh, set. And we can easily make out the maxillary sinuses right in the front, frontal sinuses just in front of the uh, anterior cranial vault. We can just behind the nasal uh, middle third, we can see the ethmoidal and just below the uh, cranial vault at the base of the cranial vault, we can see the spinoidal air sinuses. Now, when, then we have the water's projection. The predominant indication for a, a water's projection is to view the maxillary sinus. That would be the first and the foremost indication. It has been designed in such a way that the maxillary sinus can be clearly visible, primarily because maxillary sinus is the most affected sinus, most closely related to the dental uh, component and easily mimics a toothache. So this is a very important uh, projection wherein the maxillary sinus becomes clearly uh, visible. And also, apart from that, we have also the fractures issue, wherein the leaf out 1, 2 and 3 uh, kind of fractures can be clearly visible, primarily because of the angulation which is seen, uh, which is used in this uh, water's projection. As you can see, because of the frontal uh, uh, placement or the anterior placement of the maxillary sinus, there is a chin uh, up position wherein the head is uh, rotated backwards in the anterior, uh, superior, in the anterior superior direction. And then the uh, central beam is at a, uh, a 55 degree angulation to the canthomeatal line. The canthomeatal line passes from the meatus up to the acanthus. Now this is uh, raised at a, a 55 degrees uh, angulation, a positive 55 degree angulation wherein it, where we can clearly differentiate the uh, maxillary sinus from uh, other uh, particular structures and we can move away the cranial vault or the bony structures of the cranial vault away from the line of projection of the central beam. Now this would be the final picture as to uh, how the water's uh, view would uh, appear on a radiograph. As you can see the rotation of the skull backwards. We can clearly demarcate the triangular shaped maxillary sinuses away from the other bony structures and uh, we can see any kind of fluid levels or any kind of polyps which are most common in the maxillary sinus. Now, how do we differentiate it? As you can see in this picture, a fluid level will have a big, uh, meniscus level, which is a, a con uh, con uh, which is a concavity which is upward with the fluid levels, and with a, a polyp, it would be a soft tissue growth, so the convexity is upward. Now, there is another called reverse Towns projection. Now, this is primarily or the main indication of uh, usage of reverse turn is to differentiate a normal fracture from a high condylar fracture. As you can see, uh, the projection over here is the head placement. Now, uh, the indications, uh, we do not have to totally uh, by heart it without actually knowing what kind of uh, radiograph it is. By seeing the head position itself, we can come to a conclusion, a broad conclusion as to the indications of this particular radiograph. Now, if you see in this particular radiograph, we're in the reverse turn projection, the head is bent down, it is in the open mouth position. This is one uh, a particular radiograph wherein we use an open mouth uh, projection. The, and the head uh, is bent forward and uh, so that the forehead is touching the uh, image receptor. Now, why are we doing this? Now, because of the opening of the mandible, the condyles translate out of its glenoid fossa and come to the edge of the uh, or the peak of the articular eminence. Now, why is it done so? Because the viewing of this particular condyle is now unhindered. Now, if it was within the glenoid fossa, the glenoid fossa or the bony structures would have hindered or uh, overlapped with the bony structures uh, images of the condyle itself. Now, by translating the mandible forward, we are moving the condyle away uh, fr uh, from the glenoid fossa. We are able to clearly differentiate the glenoid fossa, the articular eminence, and then the condyle. So any high condylar fractures or the condylar neck fractures, which could have been, uh, let's say, overlapped or uh, missed out in a normal PA projection because of the overlapping of the condyle with the glenoid fossa, this kind of uh, radiograph will clearly differentiate any high condylar fractures because we are separating that entity, the condylar entity with the glenoid fossa in this open mouth projection. 
So this is a primary indication again because of uh, is a high fractures of condyle annex. Intracapsular fractures again because of the separate entities we are able to differentiate them and condyle hypoplasia or hypoplasia. The same the KVP holds good for as with the all other extra radiographies as well as the milliampers per second. Now then we have the submento vertex projection or also called as SMV projection. Now what is the main indication as if you can see the head position over here it is a total down to up uh, projection uh, that means to say we are able to view all the structures from down below towards the uh, upwards uh, projection uh, upwards area so that we are uh, viewing the entire medial lateral expansion of the skull the mandible areas also we are able to uh, view all the soft uh, tissues as well as the hard tissues of the cranial base as such so in this particular uh, view, uh, view or x-ray uh, projection we are able to see that all the lesions which are affecting the palate and the base of the skull primarily because it is a down up projection investigation of the spinoid sinus now the spinoid sinus apart from the lateral set is always hidden between the bony structures of the cranial base now we try to we view the radiograph from down below position we, there is no question of uh, these uh, bony structures overlapping over the spinoid, spinoid sinus and we can directly view the spinoid sinus from below so also to demonstrate the base of the skull and the fractures of the zygomatic arches all these indications are clear cut and straightforward because uh, uh, down up uh, projection will uh, reveal all the bony structures which directly overlap onto the other uh, bony structures so that uh, uh, for example your zygomatic arches itself and uh, primarily it is also used to view all the basal uh, bony structures of the cranial wall as well as the air sinuses. Now the uh, KVP over here is slightly higher than uh, the other uh, kind of uh, extra radiography is primarily because it has to travel through a more bony structures, bony layers when compared to other uh, extra radiographs and uh, the MS uh, on the other hand remains the same. Now coming out of the mandibular oblique lateral projections, now those were the skull projections which I was talking about till now. There is also extra radiographies which can view the mandibular uh, uh, body or the ramus as such for lesions uh, affecting the entirety of the mandibular ramus up to including up to the uh, condyles or the body of the mandibul which cannot be viewed on interval occlusals or radi uh, interval uh, radi uh, periapical radiographies. The first one in that is the mandibular body projection as you can see the head is bent at a slight 5 to 10 degrees uh, uh, degrees on uh, from the sagittal plane and it is slightly rotated away from the sagittal plane at a 5 degree angulation so that this particular divergent uh, angulation of the mandible is placed parallel to the image receptor so that this uh, uh, gives an exact replica of the body of the mandible upon the uh, image receptor and we can uh, clearly make out any uh, extensive lesions or fractures which might be uh, not visible on a ex any other extra radiography. Now we can see over here, we can see how the uh, central ray goes below the uh, ramus of the mandible from the opposite side and directly passes to the center of the ramus of the mandible and the head is rotated uh, away from the sagittal plane at a 5 to 10 degrees. Cent uh, degrees. Now then we have a panoramic radiography which would uh, be the one of the most commonly used extra radiographies, most easy to uh, do extra radiographies without any uh, particular complications if we do follow a few principles. Now the most, uh, uh, this being the most useful among the dental uh, 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 usage or the dental physicians primarily because of its wide indications. Now this is basically a panorama view that means a wide view of the bony structures, the dental components and the surrounding areas all in a single shot on a single radiograph. So the uses ranges from the developmental uh, anomalies, from the acquired anomalies uh, to the trauma uh, issue, uh, trauma issue related injuries, uh, the dental component uh, uh, related uh, apps, uh, infections or the lesions. Now we have the since it uh, views all the uh, dental component as well as the bony component, we can view the this particular uh, dent, uh, radiograph in its entirety. So any destruction uh, along with the TMJ, since it is a uh, 
flat out a flattened out a radiograph which shows both the uh, tmjs on a single radiograph also lesions affecting the tmj can be easily viewed so this is one of the most first line of uh, investigations uh, for extensive lesions uh, which is uh, commonly used in a dental uh, practice so what is the principle of a panoramic uh, image uh, or a panoramic projection basically it is a projection of a single unit or a single view onto a single point onto the image that means to say the entire jaw in this uh, or jaw and the dental component and the surrounding areas each particular view with a changing focus is pro uh, projected upon the image receptor as the film goes around the uh, particular uh, patient's head so that means to say in a single shot with changing focuses all the areas at some point or the other while the uh, film is going around the uh, uh, patient's head is clearly viewed upon separate areas onto the films so the entire uh, uh, jaw and its maxillofacial structures can be easily placed out onto the image receptor as as you can see over here this was the basic principle of uh, the image formation in panoramic uh, uh, images panoramic views and that is related or uh, we can compare it to the uh, uh, views which we normally take this would be the system which rotates around the uh, patient's uh, uh, maxillary mandibular uh, face in the anterior direction and with, we can also see the changing focus spot now this changing focus spot is very important for this kind of uh, uh, panoramic uh, projections primarily because the particular uh, R ramus or the uh, mandibular or uh, maxillary or the mandibular structure is not entirely circular so that we can uh, use if it was entirely circular as you can see over here we could have used just a single focus spot wherein this single focus spot will enable us to view all the structures within that uh, sphere uh, in a clear uh, as a clear picture onto the image receptor now, as i was saying in panoramic uh, radiographies uh, if it was a perfect sphere if our uh, head was a perfect sphere we could have placed this a focus spot in the center of the sphere and we could have uh, rotated the uh, uh, panoramic machine around the uh, patient's head in a perfectly circular manner and it would have been not difficult to place or, or expose all the uh, uh, points on a patient's head onto the radiographic image receptor without any difficulty but because the head is not perfectly sphere it is a, a kind of a, a complicated ellipse we use the principle called a continuously moving focus spot. Now we can see over here how the focus spot traverses along a specific uh, path. Now if you, see, if you can see this particular dark uh, black line, this is the line along which the focus spot is not stationary but it continuously moves as the X-ray source moves around the head. So the X-ray mo uh, uh, machine moves around the head in the ant uh, from the posterior to the anterior side and then to the uh, posterior side on the opposite uh, uh, end. This particular focus spot traverses along this point which is again uh, 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 programmed into the uh, machine itself. So as the focus spot uh, traverses along this designated path, all the structures at that particular point would come into perfect view or which would uh, put this particular uh, uh, area or this particular uh, area of interest or the uh, body part or the mandible or the bony uh, part into the perfect view or what is called as image layer which in this particular layer as you can see this particular layer is one particular uh, uh, area wherein all the structures placed within this particular uh, uh, dimension or within this particular width will be clearly visible onto the image receptor which is the primary uh, uh, concept behind usage of a panoramic uh, radiography. So uh, the, in this uh, particular uh, procedure there are few specific positions of the patient uh, head or the head alignment which should be perfectly in a, that uh, place in this particular image layer. So maintaining this, uh, these principles will uh, enable us or the enable the dental physician to position the head in perfectly into the, the, the teeth and the bony components perfectly into the image layer. Hence, all the structures can be clearly visible onto the, uh, onto the uh, film. 
as you can see when the teeth are in this particular image layer we can see the dark uh, shaded area which is the image layer width now this particular image layer if the teeth are positioned within this particular image layer we can uh, see the exact representation of the width and the size of the maxillary on the mandible and teeth without any distortions now if it is slightly placed away from the image layer these particular uh, images get widened out or stretched out that would be when it is partially outside this particular image layer now if it is totally outside away from the image layer it is totally dragged out like an elastic band it gets dragged out the image gets totally dragged out and if the uh, teeth are placed in front of the image layer it becomes totally narrow so we have to uh, uh, obey or uh, follow these particular principles of positioning the head and uh, the patient in the perfect image layer uh, so that uh, all this uh, uh, image or the areas of interest are placed directly within the image layer and we can uh, get a uh, exact replica of the uh, areas of interest without any distortion. Now, what are those principles? The primary is a placement of the head. And the placement of the head, as you can see, is shouldn't be in this particular position. That is a leaning back position, wherein the teeth, uh, uh, especially the maxillary teeth, would uh, would be placed away from the image layer because of the angulations of the upper maxillary teeth. So, what should we do? We have to bend the head forward so that the neck or the vertebral column is exactly straight or perpendicular to the floor. This enables us to keep all the uh, teeth right into the image layer, as you can see over here. Then we get a nice smiley kind of uh, uh, structure wherein there is no distortion of the teeth size or the shape. Now then the position of the tongue. Now why the position of the tongue is important? Primarily because of the air spaces, the nasopharynx, oropharynx, these air spaces uh, do not uh, play, uh, might mimic uh, abscess or an uh, infection in the periapical areas of the maxillary teeth. So closure of these particular air spaces is possible by pushing a tongue up to the palate. As you can see over here, pushing the tongue up to the palate, making the tongue touch the palate will close or block the entire air space. Hence, it does not mimic any kind of uh, uh, soft tissue uh, lesion or heart tissue lesions on the panoramic images. You can see this is the uh, final uh, representation of the panoramic uh, view wherein a perfect panoramic image will give uh, entire uh, mid, mid facial structures, the orbital areas, uh, the inferior orbital margins, the maxillary, uh, uh, ma maxillary sinuses, the nasal septum, nasal concave, the nasal turbinates, the zygomatic walls or the zygomatic arches, all the mid facial structures are seen in the entirety within the topmost portion of the panoramic image. Where the lower two thirds is entirely occupied by the teeth and its uh, uh, surrounding bony areas. The condyle from the left to the right along the ramus and the body of the mandible and the teeth, the maxillary teeth and the ma mandibular teeth in, in its entirety. So what are the concepts, uh, recapitulating the concepts of panoramic radio? The first concept is representation of these structures are uh, like uh, seeing our uh, world on a map. Our, uh, uh, the earth is round, the, all the uh, continents are in the round globe shape, the earth is round. But seeing, spread it out on a map and how do we see the entire uh, area which is opened up and placed on flat on the table. It's the same concept behind usage of a panoramic uh, radiography wherein the entire facial structures in its uh, circular or elliptical structures is spread out like a paper and placed onto the image receptor. That is the first concept of panoramic radiography. The second is the midline structures. Now as the uh, x-ray source goes around the patient, the midline structures get exposed twice. That is because uh, this uh, the midline structures from this particular area are also within the image uh, layer. And for also while uh, the when the image source goes on to the opposite side, then also the midline structures are within the focus spot or within the image layer. So these midline structures uh, are maybe projected as a single or a double images, which have to be differentiated from any anomaly or a defect from uh, in the actual patient. So these particular uh, images uh, might be projected as single or double images, which are known as panoramic artifacts and which have to be differentiated 
from a normal uh, or a pathology any other pathological conditions now there are also ghost images now these ghost images are placed uh, primarily uh, produced because of few uh, uh, um, uh, objects or few uh, areas of interest get projected twice because of the uh, rotating uh, focal spot or the continuously moving focal spot and these uh, characteristics the specific characteristics of a ghost image helps us differentiate these ghost images from the normal images and any other pathological conditions now what are those uh, characteristics they are of the same morphology but they are placed higher up than its counterpart and it is always on the opposite side than its uh, actual position and it is always blurred now uh, taking into the consideration these particular characteristics we can easily differentiate a ghost image from a normal image and then uh, also uh, which helps us differentiating a pathological condition from a normal condition the fourth concept the all the soft tissue shadows are seen such as your uh, nasal labial fold the base of the tongue dorsum of the tongue the lips ear lobes all these are uh, slightly uh, made made out onto the on the panoramic uh, radiographies and the last concept is the air spaces which are seen which can be prime uh, to some extent close up uh, use uh, using a, a few techniques like raising the tongue against the palate but still we will be able to see few important air spaces like your maxillary sinus the nasal fossa the mastoid air cells external auditory meters and the air space between the lips and the tongue and this will be the final picture of the panoramic radiography which is uh, one of the most which is a ideal uh, way in which we have to uh, take a panoramic radiography we can see the upper third with all the soft tissue uh, soft uh, tissue uh, air spaces uh, and the bony structures of the base of the cranial and the middle face facial structures and the nasal structures and then the one third uh, the below two third which shows all the bony structures of the mandible and the maxilla and the surrounding components we can also make out the ear lobes on the either uh, surface and the higher bone right down below so that brings us to, uh, to the end for for external radiographies the most common external radiographies which can be uh, used as a supplement or an adjunct in a daily day-to-day uh, -day practice thank you